This phone makes me smile. It's heavy, quality, big, and is capable of more than my previous Pixel 2 XL. Note 8. Huawei Mate 10, iPhone 8 Plus, and Sony Xperia XZ2. The phone is fast, beautiful, the screen is one of the best, the battery is average, the ease of use is amazing. So many features to love. I have taken pictures that look bad, but once you learn the camera and its limitations, you can take pictures that pixels and others are just not capable of. After less than a week playing with the camera and learning, I am taking photos that just make me very happy. Video quality is very good as well. I bought the XC2 Premium on sale, but would happily have paid more than $700 plus if I had to. It's the phone that I have been waiting for, Sony's Xperia XZ2 Premium. You may be wondering, didn't Sony release an XZ2 and the XZ2 Compact? What is the difference with the Premium? The XZ2 Premium is 5.8 inches and offers 16 to 94 k HDR, 3840 by 2160 pixels, versus the XZ2 which offers 5. 7 inches 18 to 9 full HD plus HDR. In fact, the premium offers an incredible 759 pixels per inch density and is the first phone that can display 4K HDR content and record 4K HDR content. Both offer 19 megapixels motion eye but the premium has a dual which offers 12 megapixels for the main rear camera. while the front camera offers 13 megapixel selfie 3D capture while the XC2 offers only 5 megapixel selfie 3D capture. And for those who are very hardcore when it comes to adjusting colors, Sony includes its TRILUMINOS technology as well. The other differences is that it comes with 6GB RAM, 64GB internal memory and is expandable to 400GB micro SDXC, while the XC2 comes with a 4GB RAM, 64GB internal memory and expand a BL. The display also offers a white pixel for better candela while reducing power consumption. I also like a camera that can work in low light situations and with the ISO 12800, that makes the camera for indoor photography even more important for me. But that's a question many will need to decide, to go. If you are posting videos on social media, then definitely consider the upgrade to 4K. While I unboxed the Sony Xperia XZ2 Premium smartphone, I felt the look was elegant. But along with the elegant look, it leads to possibly the biggest negative I have with this phone. I'm going to let this out early and not wait until the end of the review, as there are so many positive features about this phone, I'll just share the one primary negative that I have with this phone right away. If there was one thing that I was somewhat put off, it was the curved back design of the Already, I have seen the phone drop as its sleek background and curved back covering, made the phone vibrate and fall. Even when putting on top of a few things, it would fall. You will definitely need to lie it perfectly flat or get a protective case. In fact, if there was anything negative about the phone, it's that sleek curvature. While it looks nice, Last thing you want is to put your phone on top of your office desk, set it to vibrate and watch it move on its own until it falls off the desk, table, sofa, etc. So, look into getting a protective case that is somewhat rugged. Word of caution, just be careful that the case you are getting is for the premium and not the regular Xperia XZ2. In addition, I was often scared to hold this phone when shooting photos or video. It was quite slippery. If you are a phone dropper, once again, I highly recommend getting a protective case that is somewhat rugged. 
Upon getting the phone all set up and ready, you go through establishing your security and also fingerprint, done on the rear of the phone, which works perfectly. I set up the Wi-Fi and then it was time to go and test the device. So, I took a little Gundam Gunpla model to do my tests and first, a regular shot using the camera. One button press of filters made it easy to customize the photo fairly quickly. I tested the camera and I liked the bokeh that was produced. But once I put it through the photo editor to do some post-production, I was able to bring out the colors and experiment with the different filters the software offers. I also liked how well the camera was able to shoot in low light conditions using the manual or superior auto settings. But I was cool. It could be the sun, perhaps I hit another button as you can adjust filters to the video but I plan to do more video tests soon. Also, to see how well the camera holds up in shooting in long durations. I tested the slow motion, but it came out as 480p, I tried it again a second time and saw the screen info. That you can go 960p. I did have one major concern, it's hot right now in California. Super hot. And while shooting in 4K, the phone started to overheat. I could feel the heat projecting behind the unit and I got a warning that the phone's temperature was getting hot, so I stopped using it for a little while. Sure, I haven't had this before, but I wasn't shooting 4K for that long, nor was I outside in the heat that long either. When it came to gaming, I tested the phone and this is where it really did well. May it be, Asphalt 9 inches or, PUBG for mobile, the games, no matter how intense the graphics were, the phone was able to play these games flawlessly with no glitching. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 mobile platform did very well. And as for music, the phone worked wonderfully in playing back music on Google's Play Music and currently, Paul Abdul's best album is available for free and the phone produced great sound via the included earbuds, but I prefer my B&O headphone. Click link in description for more reviews.